so I'm here with Raw Review. I thought Raw was another good show, another quality show this week. I think it's two out of three weeks now we've had a good show, so I'm uh, I'm pretty happy. So we start off the show with Paul Heyman coming out with the Punk's music. A little retarded here to you know get the fans all riled up and think it was Punk here. Um, so Heyman talks about Punk, says uh. Uh, you, you know, he, he pretty much explains, you know, how he he was the only guy who really liked him and nobody else did. Um, and he just really talks about, you know, his liking for CM Punk back in the day and how and he also talks about how, why Punk's gone. You know, he gets into that a little bit. He, he talks like, though. You know, he, he didn't mention specifically like who was keeping him away or whatever, but he sort of implies that you know the, the Vince McMahon and the Triple H's and the, you know pretty much the McMahons are keeping him away. You know I, I like I like the promo. It was sort of like a shoot work promo. You know it was supposed to be made like a shoot shoot, but it wasn't. It was a work. So I liked it. Then he blames the fans. For uh, Punk not leave for Punk leaving, um, he also blames Undertaker. So, uh, you know, he, he sort of, you know, the fans were sort of cheering what he was saying. And he's like, "Oh, it's your fault, fans!" And then the fans started turning on him. So that was a nice little move there. You know, they were they were liking what he was saying because he was pretty much doing like a little bit of a shoot, and then he just turned on him and they just started booing them. So I sort of liked that little mentality there. Um, so I, so I like the promo, but it sort of doesn't make any sense when he says, oh, the fans are the reason uh, why uh, Punk left. When he pretty much implies earlier in the promo that uh, it was pretty much Vince McMahon and Triple H and those two guys pissing off CM Punk uh, is, is probably the top reason why he left. So it doesn't really make too much sense. And, you know, it talks about Undertaker too, you know, as a reason why he left and... You know, it just, that, you know, it didn't gel together. But it was a good promo. They addressed the punk situation. They didn't explain it as much as they addressed it. But they explained it, you know. Th you know, they, they made a storyline off of it. So I'm happy, all right. The first mention of CM Punk. Uh, finally, it's about fucking time. The only reason they did it is because it's in sh fucking Chicago. So they would be fucking chanting his name the whole damn show. Then uh, Lesnar comes out. Lesnar cuts a, you know, decent promo. Didn't botch or anything. Then uh, Mark Henry <clears throat> comes out. I need a, need a fucking drink of water here. Fucking throat's getting dry. Got, got a little bit of a cold here. So, uh, so sorry about that, guys. But, um, yeah, if, you, if my voice sounds weird, I... Got a little bit of a cold here, but sorry about the little brief interruption there. So Mark Henry comes out, you know, after Lesnar cuts a decent promo, didn't botch or anything. And Lesnar just fucking destroys Mark Henry, lays him out with the F5. Enjoyed it, was pretty much what he did in, uh, when he came back on that December 30th show. But I, but I enjoyed this, you know, as much as I did the one where Lesnar returned. And then, you know, they did the brawl with Henry. So a good opening segment here. Lots of punk chants, a fun opening segment here, and also it got you know serious too, and you know it's just a good good way to open the show here. Usos defeat the Outlaws, uh, decent match, but it disappointed me that uh, the Usos won. I was hoping you know that the real Americans would get the belts over the fucking Usos, or even the Rhodes brothers are better than the Usos, but the Uso Usos are horrible. I mean, the Usos are decent wrestlers. They just have no fucking charisma, and they're annoying with that fucking dance or whatever. Um, but the Outlaws, I mean, it's not like they're great or anything, but they're the fucking Outlaws. I mean, so it was, you know, I would prefer them as champ over the Usos. But, you know, I'm not, like, fucking angry, you know. I'm not too angry. A little bit upset, but, you know, I'll get over it, you know. Let's just see how this goes. I mean... They put on good matches, so I'm not too upset or anything. Um, the crowd was pretty happy too, so I, I guess it wasn't, you know, a horrible decision to put the belts on them right now. So 
decent match there. Big E defeats Cesaro. You know, the match was going on for like two minutes. Cesaro did this cool move where he, you know, picked Big E up, you know, on him, hit a hair and did a, you know, I think it was like a backbreaker, some sort of body slam or whatever. Um, then just swagger just fucking comes in the ring. It's like, and he does a swagger bomb. It's like, what, is fucking swagger a dumbass or something? It's like, the fucking match is going on. Didn't he just do this last week too? Swagger must be fucking retarded. I mean, I mean, seriously. He must be a fucking retard. He must have some mental disorder. Why is he fucking interfering in the fucking match? Makes no fucking sense. Could, you know, could they make people in the company actually look smart? Stupid. Then we get Wyatt's first shield and another great match here. I felt it was just a tad bit worse than the chamber match. You know, a couple botches, you know, not big botches or anything, but, you know, the thing is when you're doing a match like this, it has so many uh, high risk moves and high impact moves, a lot of dangerous spots. You're going to have a couple mess ups, slip ups, which I totally understand. You know, like the, the uh, German suplex off the top rope. Where Rollins was supposed to land on his feet, he sort of tripped up a little bit. Uh, it's all right, you know. It's a hard move to uh, pull off, so I can understand that. You know, uh, a botch like you know what the botches that Randy Orton fucking does, like the fucking DDT on Big Show at Survivor Series. That's when I do not understand. All right, but yeah, great match here. Uh, I sort of find it stupid how Rollins just left out in the middle of nowhere. He's like. Oh, I don't want to keep you guys together, you know. He's like, oh, I'm the glue or whatever. It's like, they were sort of all in dissension together. It's not like Reigns, you know, I, I guess Ambrose and Reigns had a little bit of a mini feud going on, but it's not like they were portraying Rollins as a man of reason or anything, like a major man of reason. I guess he was the guy in the middle or whatever, but just, I felt it was just retarded how he left. You know, you got people crying, you know. Yeah, I, I was going through my Twitter feed or whatever it's called. I, I, I get a picture of this person who took a selfie of their self crying because a shield broke up. Are you fucking kidding me? You know, you're going to cry because a fake team broke up. Just, just retarded fans crying because a fucking team broke up. But yeah, that was a great match there. No complaints. Santino and Emma defeat Fandango and Summer Rae. Not horrible, but not good. I mean, I had a couple decent spots in the, in there. Um, but I, I just can't take this, this match here seriously anymore. I mean, they're basically recycling the same shit with Emma and Santino and Fandango and Summer Rae. Like, over the past three weeks now, I've had enough. So, I mean, it was all right. But, you know, the wrestling was all right. But I, it, I, I was fucking, you know, not happy with this. Sheamus defeats Christian. You know, a lot of the fans didn't like this match here. Chain and this is awful. I liked it. I thought it was a good match. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people are going to say this is a, you know, when I, when I first saw, you know, Sheamus versus Christian, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a boring match. But it actually turned out to be a pretty good match. So I'm going to say it was a pretty good match. A lot of the fans didn't like it, but I did. Then we get a um, uh, backstage brawl. Between Christian and Sheamus, which I liked, you know, not, you know, not like a very extreme brawl, but at least we got something. I mean, when's the last time we've got a practice stage brawl? So at least we got something. Um, that we get uh, Bellas defeating Ox, uh, what's her, Alicia Fox and Oxana. All right, match. There was a few decent spots in here. No major botches or anything, so I can't bash it too much. But who really gives a fuck about the Divas? So it was a all right match, but nobody really gives a shit. Um, let's see. You know, it, it, I keep fucking turning the iPad, and then it automatically scrolls up to the fucking top. It's getting annoying. Um, Brian comes out to a big pop. Says he was says he's gonna hijack Raw with the crowd. Um, you know, uh, you know, fun little promo here, where Triple H and Stephanie come out. A lot of people might be, you know, saying, oh, Triple H was, you know, degrading Brian, which he was. But I had fun during this promo. I mean, the crowd and everything. I, I thought it was, you know, you know, Brian incorporated the crowd into this promo. So I, I thought it was fun. But, you know, 
every fucking chance Triple H got, he's like, oh, B plus player, you know, I'm too good for you. It's like, shut the fuck up. You know, your job is, you know, once you get older as a wrestler, once you get into your 40s, you're supposed to put the fucking younger talents over. And he just fucking buries them. It's like he's been doing this for like six months now. It's like, come on, just say he's good. Just say he's better than you, because he is. It's fucking annoying. So some, you know, some. I had fun during this promo. It was a fun little promo, a good promo. And even Triple H and Stephanie had a couple decent spots here in this promo. But for the most part, Triple H and Stephanie were just retards during this promo. You know, but, you know, maybe not retards, but they, they did have a couple of good spots. But, you know, overall, everything put together it was a it was a good promo here. Um, so then we get uh, Ziggler defeating Del Rio. It wasn't great wrestling or anything. I think it was only like a five minute match, but Ziggler wins off the fucking distraction off the guy who was on. I don't remember his name or anything, but... Glad Ziggler got a win here. Probably won't mean anything, but <clears throat> glad he won. Paul Bearer gets announced into the Hall of Fame. You know, good. You know, he's rest in peace. Paul Bearer, glad he's going to get into the Hall of Fame. So, that is good. Biggie defeats Swagger uh, via the disqualification. This time Cesaro comes in and gives a neutralizer to Big E. And they start fighting. Cesaro is about to give the swing to Swagger. Then Coulter steps in. Um, so it looks like they're going to break up. I'm excited about this. You know. And it's good. You know. With the Shield. They're, they're like fucking promoting it for like five months. Their breakup. You know. They're doing fucking dag stage segments and shit. You know. You don't have to promote it for five fucking months. Just you know. Have a couple weeks of them having dissension. And do it. Just do it one week. And get, get it over with. You know. It's like. They just keep fucking doing shit, and it's getting annoying now. Just break them up. You know, that's how I feel with the Shield. And, you know, the real Americans, it seems like they're just going to do that. You know, tease a little bit of a dis dissension in a couple week period, and then just break them up, which they should do. The, the dissension or the, the breakup process shouldn't take five fucking months. Um, then, uh, uh they, they do the, oh, I wanted to mention this, they do the We the People chant. And it was fucking, you know, loud as fuck. They're over as fuck. It's pretty obvious now. I mean, holy shit, are the Frail Americans over there? He'll tag team and they're over. It's a, just a fucking crime, pretty much. They haven't gotten the belts yet. Cena comes out to cut a promo. He, oh, they're like, oh, he refused treatment on his knee. Oh, what a fucking, you know, superhero this guy is. What a fucking immortal god this guy is. Let's just bow down to fucking John Cena. Yeah, and fucking, you know, just say he's like fucking God. Um, he gets booed out of the fucking building pretty much. This whole promo was pretty much about Chicago. He's like, oh, I have so much respect for Chicago and its fans. Oh, my God, you know. Maybe he turned a couple people, you know, that were booing the cheers. But still, the majority of the audience was still booing him, and I loved it. I loved it so much. He's like limping up there. Oh, uh, I'm so hurt. I, I refuse treatment. I love you, Chicago. Oh, feel bad for me. And hey, still fucking boot his fucking ass. Then Bray Wyatt cuts a promo. He compares him to a, a horse in a race or whatever. Good promo here. Bray Wyatt is known for cutting good promos, at least in my opinion. So, not a bad little segment here uh, from Bray Wyatt. Seeing this promo, though, was a bunch of bullshit. Then Rusev comes out and just stands on a fucking stage. It's like, what the fuck's the point of that? Talks in fucking Bulgarian, I think it was. And it's like, really? That's what? What, what a fucking debut that was. What the fuck was that? It's just stupid. Can we get a good debut like Brock Lesnar debuting? Uh, you know, no good debuts in WWE anymore. And in general, nothing really good in WWE anymore. You know, they just fuck everything up. Then we get Brian and Batista, then some DQ, the match fucking sucked. Orton interferes, then, you know, Brian gets attacked, he gets Batista bombed, pedigreed, and then the corporation standing over Brian. So, uh, yeah, not a good way to end the show, but, um, you know, with Brian being fucking attacked by like 10,000 people. But overall, a, a good show, some good matches, especially the Shield and the Wyatts. You know, just a good show. I had fun tonight. I had a good time. I wasn't falling asleep. So, uh, especially that first hour was really good. So, uh, a good show. 
overall. So uh, there you go, people.